is a sciatic nerve and it really isn't a nerve in itself because it's made up of five nerve roots starting from the L4, fourth lumbar nerve root. The fourth lumbar nerve root comes out at sort of the bottom of the body of L4 and then you have L5 and then you join with three sacral nerves, S1, S2, and S3 nerve. And they join together in a sheath that's about as big as your ring finger or little finger. As you see, it's quite large and it escapes out of the pelvis through this bony opening, which we can show in a minute if you want, called the greater sciatic notch. So we'll show that in a minute. So what I want to make clear to all of you is if you compress a nerve, you, you interfere with its oxygen, you're going to feel tingling and then numbness and then pain, tingling, pain, and then numbness. And numbness is a worse sign than pain, mm -hmm. which is interesting because you would think numbness wasn't as bad, but numbness means you really interfering with the O2 to the nerve. N nerves have blood vessels. They need to have oxygen. They have the highest metabolic rate in the body is nerve tissue. Mm -hmm. So these five nerves come together in this sheath and it's called a sciatic nerve. And we'll show you the bones in a minute where it comes out, but it comes out right through the middle of your buttock. And if you're a meditator, if you've gone to sessions or sat for a long time, you can actually start to get numbness in your legs because you're sitting on the sciatic nerve and you need to, you need to move forward in your sitting position. So you take the weight off the middle of the buttock. Bicyclers, especially those banana seats who were invented by reincarnated medieval torturers, <laughs> apparently, is that you bring your knee up like you do when you're sitting and, and riding bikes, you know, it, with those seats, is that you really can expose the sciatic nerve to repeated trauma from the bicycling. And it, a lot of times the bicyclers don't have very large amounts of <laughs> adipose tissue on the buttocks, so it's easier to, to press on that nerve. But Another very important thing to know when we're studying the column in a therapeutic way, do you see that muscle, horizontal uh, muscle right away at the exit of the sciatic nerve? Here? Yes. That is the piriformis and it, it means round because it's kind of round. And it is an external rotator. So if you can imagine where you see it coming, you, can you kind of go to where it disappears into the femur? Here. Yes, you can just, yeah, it grows into the bone, right? It, the muscle loses some of its contractile elements, becomes a tendon, but it's this, the tendon is a substratum. And then it gets, it's, it's reddish from a lot of blood vessels in the muscle and muscle fibers, and then it gets whitish and it grows into the bone. That's the mm -hmm. tendon. And that's where it inserts. So it holds onto the bone and you can't see it under that white connective tissue, but it holds onto the sacrum. Uh -huh. So it, when you bring those two together, it externally rotates the femur. Right. So if this is my femur and this is my piriformis, when my piriformis contracts, it's going to externally rotate. Now, so if the external rotators are tight, especially the piriformis, the piriformis can press down on the sciatica, sciatic nerve rather, can press down on the sciatic nerve and cause this sciatic pain. It can also be caused sciatic pain at the disc where the, remember we looked in the cervical region and we saw how close together the nerve root was to the disc. So if the disc, let me show, let me get bones. Okay. And I want to tell people while you're getting that sorted, that there is a fantastic drawing of the sciatic nerve and the piriformis on page 73 of Yoga Bot. <laughs> so here's, you can see, this is representing a, a bulging disc, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can see how close it is to the nerve. Right. And so if this is bulging, it can, it, there's a lot of other things in here, lymph and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So 
veins are around there. And this foramina is a busy place. And, and so there's a lot there. And th this there's not enough room. It, now it looks like there's plenty of room, but it's not that much room. And the, and the, the disc can actually press on the nerve and <coughs> cause sciatica. So if, if you think someone has sciatica, if they, first of all, if they have numbness, tingling, or pain, they need to go see a physical therapist, an osteopath, an orthopedist, someone who can diagnose clearly it, what's happening. But you could start probably, if they have a little bit, is to give them some rotator stretch. And maybe we can show a rotator stretch when you're on the mat. Mm -hmm. Write it down, we'll do it. So here I have a sort of naive question for you, mom. Why are we looking at the sciatic nerve, which runs all the way down the leg, and the piriformis on the buttocks in a course about the spine, about the back? What's, why, why is that here, especially on day one? Why is the sciatic nerve so important when we think about the back? Because it has lumbar nerve roots, and what you do to your lumbar spine can affect the health of the sciatic nerve. And if you're always in flexion, rounding forward, in standing and in sitting, you're putting more pressure on the discs. And did you, I don't know, you, a lot of our, our listeners may remember this, but there used to be these things called beanbag chairs. <laughs> yes. You ever see those? Yeah. So it's very hard to get out of. <laughs> you sit down and you sit down in that chair and I don't know what it has in it, but it kind of bulges out to the side. And, and that's what happens when you, when, you, when you compress the disc. Now, you compress the disc every time you do a forward bend and every time you do a twist. And in daily life, it's not a problem to compress the disc. Like now I'm compressing my right side, my left side. Now, it's not a problem. It's a problem when you're statically always in that posture. And mm -hmm. people in our culture sit a lot. As Mary always says, they, they drive a desk. Yeah. They're driving, they're sitting, they're eating and sitting, sitting, sitting. And then they come to yoga and you say, tuck the tailbone. So I think we should know about the sciatic nerve. I think we should understand the dynamics of flexion and the effect that the position of the column has on the peripheral nerves. Mm -hmm. 